is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Alrighty, there he is. How you feeling, Ira? How you feeling about this mess that is called the Miami Heat right now? Uh, I, you know what? I'm probably feeling how they're feeling. Plenty stressed about it. Uh, when reality hits home and you realize who you are and the task ahead of you, I think this is as sobering as any time I can remember for the Heat, probably in the last at least three seasons. Even, even two years ago when they lost in the first round to Milwaukee, they still felt there was something left. Now to have to probably try to make the playoffs through the play-in round, this is like nothing this team has experienced in at least four years. It's almost like you're back in the Tyler Hero draft year getting through that 2018-19 season. No, it's uh, it's uh, kind of disturbing uh, what's going on. And I know that you know many times I watch the comments of uh, the coach or the players, and specifically with Jimmy Butler, he kind of kept putting you off uh, no, we'll be fine. We'll turn it up. We'll turn it up. Um, and, and you're talking about, you know, finding out the reality of who you are. Does Jimmy Butler still think right now that they can turn it up? Because it just doesn't seem like a team that can find a way to turn it up. No, and, and it's interesting because it all the turns, Big O. First you say, we'll turn it up at the trading deadline. They got nothing. Then you go, we'll turn it up at the buyout deadline. And there was real optimism with Kevin Love and Cody Zeller until you realize this team needed more than ninth and 10th men. They need something further up the rotation. What hits home is this. This Heat team, honestly, for the last three years, from the bubble, making it to the finals, to last year within one shot, one game, one win of the Eastern Conference Finals, is they had overachieved. And we're realizing that now after the fact. You know, look, you want to be a fan. You want to be a follower. You want to go, you have a championship aspiration. Eric Spolstra, bro. Uh, no, it's not just Eric Spolstra. makes Spolstra has you, to overachieve also, and he's he underachieved this season. makes you look better than what you are. Bubble, no. m m bubble, journeyman, last year. That's what he does, dude. That's the problem. They're really not that good. It's just you have a great freaking coach that can no, match. You had a team guy. that overachieved before, and Eric Spolstra is underachieving right now. And the problem or, is this. Or maybe this is what they really are. He just got the max out of them last year. Or they just got the like, max. Or, just like the journeymen, he got 31 and 10 out of them, and then they re-sign all of them thinking, oh, you're going to get it again. No, you're not, dude. The, 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 the coach worked his magic. It's over. That's it. No. Or Max Drews got the max out of himself. Gabe Vincent got the max out of himself. Well, I got that. I, got, I got your explanation on that one. Tyler Hero got the max out of himself as sixth man. That's the thing. This team had to underachieve to be what they are. So if you're going to talk about anyone putting behind the eight ball, it's the way the team was put together, hoping yes. for the absolute best case scenario. And when you don't get it, it gets harder for Bam. It gets harder for Jimmy. It gets harder for Tyler. Because I can give you an example. Tonight, Philadelphia 76ers, and I think you'll go down the line agreeing with me. Orlando Alzagari hosted the Big O Show five days a week and Acura Pembroke Pines reports on Monday and Friday. Who's better, Joel Embiid or Bam Adebayo? Uh, Joel Embiid. Okay. Who's a better regular season player? Please use that caveat. Who's a better regular season player, James Harden or Jimmy Butler? Now? Regular season player. Now, now, yes. like the last two years, Jimmy Butler. I think regular season player, James Harden. He can get you 35 points every single night, and he does he it. He plays he's not, no defense. He does, but he's, um, he's in the regular season. I'm talking about the regular season uh, and helping maybe, your team. Maybe four years ago, five years ago, not the Harden I've watched the last couple I, of years. I, I, I just think Butler. when you do that, and then when you I look at Ty, and you look at Tyrese Maxey and Tyler Hero. Oh, Ty don't Tyrese Maxey or Tyler oh, Hero. So what I'm well, saying, yeah, what? yeah. No, I want Tyrese Maxey because he's going to help me in, in, in the three and D department, whereas... He not Tyler, so much, but in the three department, yeah. I'd agree with that. Tyler, Tyler can only help me in the three department. Every team's big three that they're playing. Eh, Charlotte's an exception, but even going back to what they faced in Brooklyn, certainly what they faced in Milwaukee, even without Giannis, with Drew Holiday, with Chris Middleton, with, with Brooke Lopez. So that's the thing. You're asking your big three to be as good as these other big threes, and they're not. And they're so not. The overachieving came Duncan Robinson in 2020 when they went to the finals. Max Struess last year. Gabe Vincent last year. 
Dwayne Dedman had a good year, you know, last season also. A lot of guys had good seasons. Victor Oladipo. A, a wizard can only get so much out of Dwayne Dedman. Victor Oladipo had a very good time. Dedman uh, appears. Look, let me explain something to you. Did you watch New Jack City? Can't say that I did. Go ahead. All right. Well, if you watch New Jack City, the problem with G Money was he started to get high on his own supply. And that did not fly well, unfortunately, with the rest of the Cash Money brothers. And so eventually G Money was, you know, kind of uh, uh, excommunicado, as we say in uh, John Wick. So here's the problem. Is the Miami Heat G Money now? Follow me on this. They used to pick up a Isaac Austin and an Eric Murdoch, and they used to pick up a Keon Dooling, and they used to pick up all these different players off the street, right, and develop them, but they didn't keep them. They let everybody else pay them. Orlando, but I think... Something happened along the way where you pick up Whiteside and James Johnson and Tyler Johnson and Duncan Robinson, and are you going to do it with Max Struess and all this, and you're starting to get high on your own supply... And that's the problem there. You keep now you're you're falling in love with the guys you never fell in love with. Instead, gonna... what you were better off when you used to sign the James Poseys of the world and traded for Shaq and 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 LeBron and LeBron and well, that's, Nathan different. And, that's a different and, level. And, well, I, I think well making, that's what that's what I'm saying. I think and look we're at making this. a similar point in a different way. Your point is this. This is not about the ancillary pieces. And that's where the Heat have gotten caught up with the ancillary pieces. Exactly. This is about finding another star. So the Heat said, you know what? We have Jimmy Butler. and Look what he did for us in 2020. We have Bam Adebayo. He's going to grow into something special. We're extending him. We have Tyler Hero. We think he's going to grow something special. We're extending him. Who's that fourth guy we can get? Who's that fourth star we can bring in? And they brought in Kyle Lowry. That's the problem. Big O, this is a star based league all right. sports are star based sports in the nba like i went through unless you have a great big three and i mean lebron and bosh and wade level big three you're going to need another leading character that's the problem with the heat matter of fact i'm going to throw this back at you big o if you don't I, I, mind think, think about this the only guy off the street that they should have signed and they did and kept him forever was udonis haslam Outside of that, all these other guys that you found off the street never, ever approached Udonis Haslam's level of play, leadership, effectiveness on a consistent basis. They have actually failed by re-signing all of those yes. guys that you they just, have. Okay, you just, you correctly finished your sentence after a poor start for this reason. They also, with a lot of those oh, yeah, guys. Just you didn't watch New Jack City. That doesn't mean that they I also I mean, a bad analogy there. With, okay. with a lot of those guys, they decided when to cut bait. For example, Isaac Austin. Remember, he was up for a new contract, and they realized, nope, we'll go for Brent Barry short term. Three year, $9 on. million dollar deal, Orlando. I remember. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Jason Capono, great three point shooter. Toronto came with the offer. They said, you know what? No. Keon Dooling got the offer from the Celtics. They said, no. That's the difference then, which means. This summer, it's going to be interesting when it comes to Max Struess, when it comes to Gabe Vincent, when it comes right now to going in that order. So I think that's what it's going to come down also is what are they going to go doing forward? But this whole thing, this whole thing went sour. You think about it. All those guys were exploding cigars for other teams. Now you now you're re-signing the exploding cigars for yourself. We're signing the exploding cigar. And I gave you one example, Big O. If you take Kyle Lowry's $30 million salary, and you take Duncan Robinson's 16, 18 million dollar salary, wow. you have a 48 million dollar chunk, which yeah. can buy you any player in the NBA at that salary price point. So mm-hmm. you're trying to argue with me that they did 10,000 things wrong. What I'm saying is they made two significant mistakes. I oh, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you there on that. I, I was the first guy saying the Lowry deal is a terrible deal. Right. Please, I'm, I'm with you 100%, but I'm also adding that they're getting too high on their supply and they got to stop doing and they got to go back to what they were doing before. Yeah, you develop these guys, but they're not that good. Don't give them the contracts. Don't tie yourself. There's one other part to that. After the white side Johnson Johnson mess, I thought you would have learned something and no, there goes the Duncan deal. Okay, Big O, after the 2020 season and the bubble and Jimmy Butler leaning over that stanchion, literally giving you Every last breath. Oh, he's awesome. 
I think if you ask then, what would you give Jimmy Butler? I be, I do think Big O. I might be wrong here. At that point, you might have said, give him anything he wants. Oh no, I, I was he against. Wanted Kyle Lowry. I've been a, I've been against problem. extension. I've been right. I was against Jimmy's extension, and I was against Kyle Lowry. And that's the thing is, Jimmy at that moment stood as someone you would give him anything you want because he gave you every last ounce. Hey, you live and you learn right now. All of these factors contributed, but more than anything, the one factor that contributed the most is the big money investment. Not Jimmy. He's been fine. He'll be fine. Well, no, he's, he's, he's fine for now. Well, that, I don't think that contract ends fine. Okay, we'll wait for that. It's, but yeah. it's been it's been the Kyle Lowry thing, and it's been undeniable. Okay. And it looks like for three seasons of $85 million worth of money, you're going to get one half of one season of payoff. And a one-sixth return on an investment doesn't play at any brokerage. No, no. I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, tonight they are, uh, six point underdogs, uh, no Kyle Lowry, apparently no lousy tonight. Uh, any, any other news coming out of that matchup? Um, no, it looks like, uh, Tyler hero had a knee issue. He'll be good to go. Kevin love will be good to go. They're not as good as Philly. Here's the problem. Let's look at the schedule. Not only Philadelphia tonight in Philadelphia, the Sixers Wednesday at Miami date arena. Then they have the Knicks on Friday, Atlanta on Saturday, Atlanta on Monday, Cleveland on Wednesday, Cleveland on Friday. This is a bitch of a schedule. This is not, okay, we're going to come home, play seven of eight of home, and we'll be okay. No. And this goes back to big, oh, I'm so glad I didn't do the show. No offense to our good friends at Accurate Pembroke Pines on Sunday, because after that Charlotte loss, like I would have had no, there would have been no counterpoint there. It's the crap bowl of losses, the Hornets' losses, yeah. the Pistons' losses, those Lost games. The Hornets already this year. And that's the problem. Look, we, you and I spoke after the loss at home to Denver. Jokic is great. They didn't have that team's number. Okay, they fought hard. They lost. You move on. Brooklyn, last game before the All-Star break, every, Jimmy's halfway to Argentina. It's a road game. Brooklyn has that new player energy and buzz. Okay, Mikhail Bridges goes off like he never will before. But there are so many crappy performances that I just wonder if Eric Spolstra can squeeze anything more. I know you've been singing his praises all season. I love him. I, love I him. know that he's been extracting orange juice from an orange rind, and I get all of that. He's awesome. But you're at a point now, Big O. Big O, this is a talent league. This is a talent world. The Heat are not talented. No. The Heat, now, yeah. the Heat are seventh in the East right now. I'm not so sure I can tell you that the Heat have the seventh best roster in the East. I'm not so sure I can't tell you that Toronto is better, that Atlanta is better, that Washington. They, they, you know, you can keep squeezing again. They have overachieved, and eventually, there's a statute of limitations on overachieving. Yeah, I, I get it, and I uh, that's why I, out of everybody there, I, I'm 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 behind Eric Spolster 100. percent I, I I think he's done a phenomenal job considering what he's been given every single year. You know, and he's not given anything exceptional, and that's the that's the problem. You give him something excellent, he'll turn it into a championship. By the way, you talked about Atlanta. I'm a really big Quinn Snyder fan, dude. I believe in that guy. I think he's a really good coach. I get it. There's only 30 of those jobs, but my lord, he's got to try to fix the Trey Young situation. It's like he doesn't look like a bad kid or anything. It's just. I look at Trey Young, and after watching him now after several years, he cannot be your best player. And if he's your lead guy, I don't think you'll have a shot ever at being a championship uh, type of team. I almost think, like, I I'm serious now when I say this. I think he's more of a second or even a third guy uh, overall, to be quite honest with you. I, I, I don't know how this thing's going to work. I get it. There's only 30 of them, but I kind of feel bad that Quinn has to settle for well this Trey Young is a leader bust kind of guy because that's how he plays. He's never going to accept. Yeah. He's never going to be. He takes high volume shots. It reminds me of Allen Iverson with the Sixers. Either you surround him with four complimentary players like they did with Matumbo and Eric Snow and George Lynch and Tyron Hill and saying, he's going to shoot a lot. You rebound and give him the ball back, which I don't know if it works in today's NBA. But oh. even worse than that, Atlanta is a situation where the owner gave power to the owner's son. The owner's son then moved out the GM, brought in Landry Fields from Toronto, and so now you literally have the kid running the candy store. Bigo, I think over the years you've worked for some radio people who gave the company to their son and told their son to sort of manage things. And when you get into that kind of family relationship, it's not being run professionally. The Hawks are not being run professionally. But you know about a Quinn Snyder? 
everyone has a price and they hit his price and he said right. okay for that kind of money i'll put up with his owner's son i'll put up with trey young and i'll do the best i can we see this all the time whether it's phil jackson going back to the knicks we see it you do it for a while you get the money hey if it doesn't work out you still have your reputation but that's a tough spot and yet with the new coach bump i could see the heat having to open the play in in atlanta unfortunately right I'm a, I'm a Snyder fan. I like him. What do you got going on in the Sentinel well, leading up to the game tonight? It's interesting. My ask Ira today was about Victor Oladipo, and I'm surprised you don't have some awkward nickname for him right now because he has been not very good the last two weeks, not yeah. who the Heat thought. Here's what's interesting. They gave him a two-year contract with a $9.5 million player option for next season. Get high on your own supply, Ira. Yes, They're getting yes. high on their own supply. And you thought he'd have a good season. He'd opt out. You wouldn't have to worry about it. You might have next season. Not only Kyle Lowry's 30 million on the books, not only Duncan Robbins is 18, but nine and a half for Victor Oladipo. Again, like you said, you're overvaluing what you had. You could have done a one year deal with Vic, but you wanted to stay your favorite subject under the tax, save money on the cap, and you're paying out to the future. Big O, it's like when you refinance your house. You got a bad investment and you keep refinancing it. Right. That's where the heat wound up with the Oladipo thing. It just shows you. This season is not about one or two or three things souring. Really, it's about four or five or six things from Gabe Vincent to Max Drews to Duncan Robinson to Victor Oladipo to Dwayne Dedman, who's gone to Kyle Lowry. That's the thing. You can't overachieve when four, five, six parts aren't overachieving. That's where they are right now. They're so not the real question away. is, will we lift up the G Money jersey right up next to the Dan Marino and uh, and Jordan jersey? Is that what we're going to do? Well, if you say they got they learned their lessons from the movies, then apparently so. Again, there's still 21 games to make the best of their quote unquote supply. We'll see if that's possible. All right, aren't you inspired now to go see New Jack City? As soon as I get done with this, I'm going to go to YouTube and see what I can get for free. But I'm more inspired to come back with Kurt Heel on Wednesday, 9 a.m. Yes. RedRecover.com inside the paint. It'll be in the middle of the series against the Sixers. So we'll have a, an idea. Are the Heat good enough? How do they measure up? Or are they who we think they might be? So I think Wednesday is going to be really interesting because I think Kurt, with his outside view from NBC Sports, maybe can give us another perspective on where the Heat stand. Amen. Follow him on Twitter at Ira Heatbeat. Ira, as always, excellent stuff. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Enjoy the game tonight. Catch you Wednesday, redrecover.com, inside the paint. Friday, another accurate Pembroke Pines report. Thanks, Big O. You got it, my brother. And by the way, they got a large – Sean and I were there on Friday. The selection is sick right now at Accurate Pembroke Pines. They are overflowing with cars, all kinds of new cars. They've got a large selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Get on down to 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I-75 in Pines. I saw an NSX there. It's a red one, and it is awesome. So for those of you that, uh, I don't know, you, you're comfortable and you can get I wish I could afford an NSX. Man, that car is absolutely awesome. So get on down there. Go see Larry Schlossberg, Pat Nasto, Tony Stampo, and the great people at Craig Zins. Acura of Pembroke Pines. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.